Hello, students. Welcome to biology class from uh, 0610 uh, for IGCSE. And this is another discussion session with the, uh, the question paper, which is already shared with you. So let's get started. The diagram shows what happened in an experiment with plant seedlings. So you look at the diagrams, one of them, the, the seedlings are growing and they under the light and another one, the light is actually shining from the right side of the plants. Which characteristics of the living things made the seedlings grow towards the light? Um, showing this kind of the reactions to the, uh, I mean, the change in the direction of uh, every time uh, depend from where actually this light is coming from is a uh, is kind of the reactions that the plants they make uh, to the light to the sunlight uh, to in order to get the most of the light which is uh, shining so they get advantage of absorbing uh, most of the light so this is a sensitivity this phototropism and is a uh, geotropism, phototropism, they are kind of senti sensitivity. So the answer of this part is sensitivity. It's not excretion, because excretion means, for example, in the plant is like evaporation, is a transpiration or evapotranspiration, is a kind of excretion. Nutrition is not nutrition, because nutrition usually uh, is kind of like if I want to consider for example, it's just feeding, eating up to get the nutrients from the environment. It's not getting the nutrients, it's getting energy. So, and you get that usually it's getting the nutrients to use to provide food or store energy. And respiration, is it respiration? No, it's not respiration. Uh, the respiration is chemical reaction happens in the cells, individual cells, the plant, the photosynthesis, and also um, respiration a bit in the light, in the sun during, during the morning, in the daylight, but and most of it is done in the during the night time. Uh, but uh, respiration is chemical reaction, which is during which, in the opposite direction of the photosynthesis, is using the food and combining with the, with the oxygen from the air and to produce a huge amount of energy, um, water and carbon dioxide. So this is not actually showing, there is not see any sign of this kind of the reaction. So this is sensitivity. The next question, which organ detects the changes in the carbon dioxide concentration of blood? Um, to, the one is not the liver, liver is not responsible for that. It should be something which is actually relevant to the nerves. It has, the nerves are there. It's not pancreas, it's not lung, it's brain. The brain actually detects the changes. And based on that, it either is a nervous system that acts to make some reactions to make the proper changes, or is the, your hormonal actually uh, system that works. The next question, question number three, what, the, what is the equation for anaerobic respiration in yeast? Anaerobic respiration in the yeast, uh, we have two, uh, three different types of the uh, actual respirations. So you should know that the, uh, you have an aerobic respiration, which is glucose and uh, oxygen that react. And in a result, we got we get a lot of uh, ATP, I mean energy from the respiration, and plus carbon dioxide and water. In the anaerobic respiration, that it is in the absence of the oxygen, in the uh, in the cells like the animals and plants. So if it happens um, during these anaerobic respiration, the cells like muscle cells, for example. We will have uh, lactic acid is being produced, um, plus a bit of ATP or uh, energy. But in the yeast, uh, anaerobic respiration that happens in yeast, 
So uh, as glucose actually is broken down into car carbon dioxide plus alcohol or ethanol and uh, a of small amount of energy or ATP. So the answer of this one is C because this is C6H12 or 6 is a formula uh, of the glucose or sugar or the food which is broken down into two molecules of the C2H5OH, which is the formula of the ethanol, which is the alcohol, plus two molecules of carbon dioxide. And this is the answer, which is correct. So we move on to the next part, next question. So you should memorize these, actually the formula of each of these uh, chemical molecules. Question number four, which food type, when eaten in excess, will cause a rise in urea content of urine? Uh, most of the students, they do a mistake here. First of all, um, you should know that urea is formed in the liver, then goes, uh, the urine passes through the blood and reaches the kidney, and in kidney, the urea is changed into urine. I mean, some other things like water and anything else is added to it, so it makes urine. This is the first thing. Why the urea is being made in the liver? Um, you know that the amino group of amino acids are toxic, so it would be usually removed. What are amino acids? Amino acids, they are actually, when they are linked, when they link together, bind together, they make protein molecules. So protein molecules, when you eat, for example, meat, you, eat, you drink milk, you eat fish, chicken, so these foods, they contain a huge, a uh, lot of, a uh, large amount of the protein. Protein contains um, a small uh, molecules of the amino acid molecule. And the, when you, you digest your food in your elementary canal, it will be broken into small molecules of amino acids. So because they are necessary for making your uh, cells and many, many different uh, organelles of the cells and your body. So they are necessary. Well, um, the amino group usually needs to be, after these uh, molecules are actually gone into your body, the amino group needs to be actually removed from it because it's toxic. So it goes to the liver, and during the deamination process, the liver removes the nitrogen, and the rest of uh, the molecule will be used up. So this amino group changes into urea, and then uh, goes back to blood stream and from there it goes to kidney and in kidney go, is processed further to form urine which is later is actually uh, collected into uh, your bladder until it is uh, excreted. So, so again we review. Protein is made of the amino acids amino acids, uh, the amino group of the amino acid is actually toxic, it's poisonous. So your liver removes that one, it breaks that one apart, and during the amination and remove amino group from it, from your uh, amino acids, and then forms urea. So your urea is actually made from the whatever protein you eat. The more protein you take, the more uh, your, the, uh, the, your, your urine becomes condensed, or the more urea will be accumulated inside your body. Um, so which means you need to produce more urine. So become more con concentrated. The amount of it increases more. So if the uptake of protein in your body is increased, so the urea concentration also in your body will be increased. So carbohydrates are sugar, fats are oil, and fats are not, mineral salts not, so the, it's, the answer is protein, which is D. Make this one a bit smaller. Okay. The diagram shows a simple reflex arc. Question number five. 
And what is the correct order of events after the knee is tapped? Well, so, um, in order to know that, one, uh, actually, uh, you, this is one neuron, the nerve cell, and this is one nerve cell, and this is one. How do I know that? Because it's start from here all the way, and this is the cell body. And after that, it's, it's part is connected to another cell, cell uh, which is, this is one is the cell body of the second one, and this is the cell body of the third one. Which one actually is the first one? I know that this one is a relay, is inside your uh, actually spinal cord. And then after that, another one. This one is connected to your muscle, end of days. Uh, axon is actually attached to the muscle. And the other one, as it's written here, is written in the receptor stimulator. So there are receptor cells here, perhaps on your skin or under your skin. So when you tap your uh, knee at this point, there are receptor cells uh, which are connected here uh, to the end of this neuron. So this is the beginning of the journey. So everything starts from here at this nerve cell, this one. So this is because the receiver or receptor, it receives the, that stimuli, the stimulus, and converts it into the nerve impulses. Um, so this nerve cells, the receptors, uh, receptor cells are here on the skin. They receive that pressure or that uh, tap here. Then uh, they, they create actually a, a, a nerve impulse and send it all along today is called the third body, and then it is passed to the second one, which is a relay. It's not number, so that's why it's not important here. Then another nerve cell is here, another neuron. So the impulse passed to the relay, and from the relay actually connects the, uh, these, uh, actually connects the uh, receptor to effector. So the receptor cells connected to the, um, the other neural first relay, and then is connected to the motor neuron. So this is the receptor, so sensory neuron, and this is relay, and this is motor neuron. Motor, it means something that causes something to move. It, either it can be like contraction, uh, relaxation or something like jerking or something like that. So it usually it connects to like something like muscles or the glands, the glands to secrete some liquid or some hormones or either other things, and or the connected to the muscles that cause movement or other contraction or relaxation. So this one. Uh, motor neuron and the other one is the sensory neuron. So everything starts from here. So this is the first point. So, so I'll generate a start from number four. Here you receive the stimulus. Then this one, number two sensory neuron become activated, passes all the way, all these stimulus, all the messages along to the relay. It's not numbered, we'll come forward to. Without continuing with the rest, you can know that the answer should be C, because 4 to the only is in the C, and with other ones, do not follow this order. So the next one is the motor neuron, which is activated, and then it is attached or connected somehow to your muscles. So it causes your muscle to move. So effector is your muscle. So the answer is C, 4, 2, 1, 3. Question number six. The diagrams one and two show the appearance of the front of an eye. The diagram three and four show the shape of the lens when viewed from the side. Which diagrams show the appearance of the eye when focusing on a near object in bright daylight? It's very important. So it should be looking at the near object and the bright daylight. So you have too much light entering into your eyes. So in order to protect your eye, your eye 
actually iris should become smaller to protect your eye to not be damaged it just controls the amount of the light that goes in so if you are too much i'll say so bright so it should become closer become smaller so let less actually uh, light rays to enter but and also um it's focusing on a near object it means something which is close to you so anything come close to the eye your lens will become more rounded becomes uh, wider it becomes thicker it becomes um rounded shape and flatter like this so so this means that but when you look at the far you know, the lens should become thinner it becomes narrower it's stretch like this okay so this is when you look at the far and this is when you look at near objects something very close to you and this this eye number two is when you are inside darkness in somewhere which is very dark or there is a dim light not too much light in there and this one is means that the first one you're all entering into a room or you're in a room which is very bright too much sunlight is there and all these things sharp light so the answer for this one should be number one and number four. Which one has number four and four is question is option B. So B is answer. Question seven is shows a diagram that the seedlings are fixed on the rotating platform. And then the light is However, is the direction of the light is from the left side, but because this actual platform is rotating, is moving, so the sitting also is fixed and pinned on it. So it's also rotating together with this platform. So everywhere on the shoot of the sitting receives equal amount of the light. Due to that, the oxygen which is produced on the tip of this shoot is distributed equally everywhere in every side, every part of the shoot. So it means that during these two days that the, this platform is rotating, the, because the oxen is equally distributed, so the plant grew upward and straight. So it means that and between these actually, between these options, C is wrong, totally wrong, and you have to omit it because this uh, shoot is moving towards the earth, towards the ground, it shows a positive gravity opposite, which is wrong. Usually, shoots uh, have to move away from the uh, gravity, or against the gravity, or away from the ground. So it should go up, not down. So, a bit between A, B, and D, now we have to read again. So, it said after, after two days over, they stopped the rotation, is stopped, is not moving, the platform is not rotating anymore. So, and what is happening then? If they stop the platform from rotation, so because only the light is actually received by the plant from one side, one direction, which is on the left side, so uh, we know that the plant, uh, on the shoot of the plant, the oxygen now is not equally distributed and usually gathers and accumulates uh, away from the light on the dark part, on the darker part, which is on the right side. So the right side of the shoot will be more oxygen. Oxygen causes the uh, elongate, elongation of the cells on that part. So on the right side of the plant, or the shoot of the plant grows more than the left side. So it bends toward the light, which means on the towards the left. So D is correct, A is wrong, and B is also wrong because still the light is coming from one direction. So you cannot go straight up after that. It's bent here on the, to the left towards the light, but again going up, so this is wrong. If they said we, we kept again after two days rotate, rotating the disc, so then you say, okay, B is correct. B would be the answer because it shows that it had been rotating, then after that it stopped rotating, now again its rotation has begun again. So well, this is not happened, so the B is also wrong. So the answer is D. Question number eight. Um, question number eight now. And I 
answer that of today is that if the alcohol is a drug, uh, the first option says that it can cause COPD. What is COPD? COPD is, uh, is an abbreviated form of the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It means pulmonary is means anything related to your, your lungs obstructed. It means that it's a block, it's a blockage, and chronic it means that is a uh, in the long term disease, uh, if it forms in the long term. So actually, this is called this is COPD is uh, caused the airflow blockage and breathing related issues, which are usually uh, resulted by the emphysema or bronchitis. Um, so this actually usually is initiated or becomes severe or uh, the dosing that has an effect on this is not alcohol, it's usually more uh, like uh, smoking and all these things that irritates your lungs and causes more allergic reaction. So it's not the alcohol that causes COPD, it's more related to the smoking and other things, or maybe inherited issues. So A is not the answer. So how about C? It is not addictive. It is addictive. It means that once you, uh, if you get used to the draw to this kind of the uh, alcohol, so you're, it starts you increase it, increase it because your uh, brain become conditioned to that. It means that every time you need a higher dose, so it's of course you, it's, it's very hard to give up. Withdrawal is very hard for you. So some of the people become alcoholists. So it is it is addictive draw. Uh, so C is also wrong. D, it reduces reaction time. No, it increases reaction time. That's why you actually uh, used to, uh, it takes more time, longer time to react to the, uh, when you, for example, driving on a road uh, for an alcoholic person, it takes longer time to react to whatever it says to perceive and then to make a proper reaction. It slows down everything, so it gets, it makes it longer to happen the reactions. So it is doesn't reduce the reaction time. Actually, it increases the reaction time. So this is also wrong. So B is the answer because it is a depressant. You may say that alcohol makes the people happier. So how come? So it has nothing to do with the mood. Um, however, at the end, at the end of if we, when they take it, maybe it changes it actually alters the mode, but after that, it uh, actually brings them down, drops them down, so they fall off a mountain, and they, they elevate them, they raise them up, and then uh, throw them out. And it means that they will be at the end depressed, however, but it has nothing to do with the mode. It is a depressant, it means that it affects the central nervous system and causes it to, which is a, actually uh, slows down a part of the brain and results in impaired cognitive function. So that means the drug is a depressant because it affects the central, central nervous system and slows down the reaction. Um, so the answer is B. Question number nine, which statement about fertilization is correct. Question number nine says that they have to uh, define the fertilization. Um, the first option says one diploid gamete nucleus device to form a haploid zygote. Uh, first, we refer to the um, definition of the fertilization. Fertilization is when two, uh, I mean, the female and the male gametes, the, uh, which each of the, these gametes are haploid. It means they have the half of the chromosomes. They fuse together and I mean, they become fertilized and they form a diploid zygote. So the zygote is a diploid. It has a double chromosome. So it's, it's two N, it's not N chromosomes anymore. So uh, two gametes, one egg cell and the other one is sperm cell. They, both of them, they have one set, one, uh, set of the chromosome. They fuse together and they, they form a diploid uh, zygote, which has uh, 20 chromosomes or 46 chromosomes, for example, in the human being. So based on the definition, 
uh, A, it says one diploid gamete divides, no, uh, actually the gametes, they should fuse together and in during the fertilization, and it's not one, two gametes, and not diploid, gametes are not diploid, they're all haploid, so this is totally wrong. Part, the option B says one haploid gamete nucleus divides, it's not division, it's fusion. And C, so this is also wrong, C, two diploid gametes, gamete is not diploid, it's haploid, fuse together to make haploid zygote. Zygote is not haploid, it's diploid. So this is wrong because of this. C, two the haploid gametes nuclei fuse to form a diploid zygote. So this is the answer and please correct. Equation number 10. The effect of adrenaline on pulse rate and blood glucose concentration. Um, adrenaline uh, actually is uh, causes your pulse rate to increase and also uh, when actually your adrenaline in your body increases, the level of it increases, you have a higher concentration of the blood glucose. The reason is that your cells need to respire more. You need more than you need more oxygen because you need to make a reaction, a sudden reaction. I, uh, maybe you are frightened, you have been threatened or anything, so you need to escape or to make a reaction. All of them, they need energy. So that's why your pulse rate increases, your, uh, you breathe actually faster or shallower, and also to gain more oxygen. And the blood glucose level, so that also should be more, more glucose released uh, into your blood to be used in the respiration process. So pulse rate increases, blood glucose also increases, so the answer is D. I don't want to go to the other options. So question 11 is about the hormone auxin in the plant again. Which statement about the auxin or correct? Auxin is made in all cells in the plant? No, it's always just actually is needed in those parts that they grow and they along the way or they make it. So for example, the auxin you cannot find it in the uh, or other parts like they don't they do not grow usually in those parts that they need to grow and so two oxygen uh, causes cells to elongate yes of course wherever you find oxygen it actually causes stimulates the cell to grow, grow longer and three says uh, oxygen moves between the cells by osmosis no it is by diffusion it just spreads from where uh, is both to where actually it is uh, less from where it is more to where it is less and then uh, oxygen is unequally distributed of course it is unequally if it was equally distributed the plant would grow straight and uh, just straight without bending nothing happened and um, well, because that unequal distribution causes the plant to bend so the answer is two and four uh, which is d Question number 12. Scientists carried out a survey on the effect of giving up smoking on the risk of developing lung cancer. The results are shown in the graph. So on the left side, we have a percentage collective risk of the developing lung cancer. And we have here on this x-axis age in years of people surveyed. Uh, the scientists made three conclusions. Uh, stopping the smoking reduces the risk of the developing lung cancer. Age increases the risk of lung cancer for smokers and non-smokers. And the early people, earlier the people stop smoking, the lower the risk of this cancer development. Which conclusions are correct? So first, I have a look and see if it is correct or not. First one: stop a sm stopping the smoking reduces the risk of developing lung cancer. So this person, this, and this part, they have a spot. Never smoked, stop smoking, stop smoking. So this actually, number one, is talking about these two lines, these two graphs. This is continued smoking, so I don't look at it. Uh, maybe we can make it just a comparison. So stopping smoking reduces the risk of developing lung cancer. Okay, they have a stop. Now, I compared it with the one that they didn't stop. Uh, so this one, 
can be correct because once they have stopped smoking, doesn't matter at which age, you didn't mention which age, but they just stopped smoking. But when I compare it with the, the one that they didn't, they never gave up. So you see that there is a huge gap, there's a difference between these two. So the one that they have continued, they continued, there is a higher risk of the developing lung cancer. So one is correct. Number two, age increases the risk of lung cancer for a smoker and non-smoker. Uh, let me look at age. For both of them, at all of them, when the age uh, increases, they become the actually older that people become 45, then 55, 65, 75. Doesn't matter in which group, even the one that never smoked, this uh, lung cancer actually risk is actually increasing is with the age. So number two also is correct. The earlier, number three, the earlier people stop smoking, the lower the risk of uh, this lung cancer. The earlier smoking, so we, now they are talking about these two only. Stop smoking at 60, stop smoking at 30. Okay, so if they stop earlier, the lower is the risk of the getting cancer. Is it correct? Yes, because this one, the uh, percentage of the risk of the developing lung cancer is lower in all these individuals when they have stopped smoking at 30 years of age or compared to the one that they stop at 60. So this also is correct. So the answer is one, two, and three, which is A. Question number 13. And the diagram shows a kidney tubule and some of the associated blood vessels. As you can see from the diagram, this is the Bowman capsule and this is the arterioles or capillaries inside or the glomerulus and uh, from here the blood enters into the glomerulus and from the other part it exists because it is a uh, afferent and this is the efferent so it goes out it takes in the blood which is still not being filtered and from the other part the filtered blood goes out so this is efferent um, arterial the capillary and then we have bowman capsule which is actually there are another extension extended tubule attached to it which is uh, here is the um, proximal convoluted tubule and this is the uh, uh, you, the tube of Henley, and the other one is a distal uh, tubule. And they all will be collected here on this uh, duct. Uh, so the question is that which substance is entirely reabsorbed from the fluid at R, and this efferent, this is where now the blood is filtered. This at P, the blood is totally filtered and go back to the circulation, blood circulation. and is this reabsorbed at R and sent to the P. So the reabsorption of which material happens at R. This is very important. I just want to show a better diagram first to you. So I just found this one on the uh, this Google search. So as you can see here, uh, this artery is bringing the blood uh, towards from the, usually towards the liver and it comes all the way uh, to the, each of the kidneys. So this is the artery. And one branch of it, uh, this is the, art, uh, the capillary. It goes inside the, each of these um, Bowman capsules. It's a capsule, and then it goes inside it, and it forms a glomerulus. And there, inside this, uh, from the other part, it goes out, it carried, but the blood is filtered because this uh, arterial here is very thin. And this uh, Bowman capsule here, it is actually a lining here inside, a line of one cell thickness. So also both of them, uh, they, they can filter the blood by just simple diffusion. So the molecules here, uh, all of them are filtered except those one that are very uh, big or like the proteins like uh, blood cells or this they cannot be filtered here they remain in the blood but the others because the also the pressure here is very high the blood pressure because of this tube is very narrow 
uh, and the, the one which goes out is a bit like thicker, it's wider, so that's why it increases the blood pressure here. So the blood come uh, those uh, nutrients or the ions or the others like the urea, like amino acids or a small, like mm, like sugar uh, and all the others like glucose or um, like water, they will actually leak into the Bowman capsule that we collected there. We call it as a filtrate. After the filtrate is moves onto the proximal car and convoluted tubule. And as you can see, a blood which is filtered now, it goes out. We call it an efferent, efferent arterial. Now it can't, can't it, it lacks of those harmless, maybe um, blood components like a urea especially, which, is, which was made in the, by the liver. Now it goes around all these tubules here. The reason is that they're all, all the way inside these tubes is still we got reabsorption. It means that there are some components that they have been filtered, those materials that have been filtered into the Bowman capsule inside this uh, nephron. Not all of them are should be removed. Some should be actually sent back into the blood because your body needs it. They are very essential or they are needed there. What are they, for example, at this part, which is called as a proximal convoluted tuber, which was in your in the diagram that was shown as R, the symbol R, is where the reabsorption of the glucose and any amino acids, if they have been leaked, happens there. Usually there is no leakage of amino acids, but if it happens, they will go back to the blood. So it means that inside the rest of the tubule, you should not find any sign of the sugar, glucose, all these things. It should be all go, go back into the blood because your body needs it. If it is uh, extra, they will be later stored in your muscle tissues or in the liver. But it shouldn't be found in the urine. You should not find any sign of the protein, amino acids, or sugar or glucose inside your urine. If you find it, if that person is sick or they has some uh, kidney problems, okay? So everything is like that. So whatever now is uh, reabsorbed, it goes inside this blood and is collected into the venue and then goes to the vein. Okay, now, at that spot, which is loop of Hinley, usually reabsorption of the water happens there. The water is reabsorbed, it goes back to the blood from here. Most of the blood reabsorption happens in the loop of Hinley uh, and makes the urine very condensed. And then the urine at this part is being formed and then is collected into the collecting duct. Okay. Now I go back to the diagram on the question. Well, now here, what is now about looking at this, what has been all reabsorbed, everything which is like reabsorbed is very important, like the, all the glucose should be reabsorbed. Although if there is a protein, there shouldn't be any protein like seen here. If there is amino acid, it should be also gone back there. So the answer is glucose, I know. Salt is wrong because the salt, salt if there are, too much of them, they will be found. They will be found in the urine. So they are packed, They go out of the uh, blood through this part by this tube. But if it is less, it will be reabsorbed. So either it will be reabsorbed or it will be stayed there, so you can find in the urine. And the urea, urea is very actually the whole purpose of this filtration of having kidneys is to get rid of the urea because urea is very toxic, it's poisonous for your body. So your liver changes the amino, uh, actually it's the aminase, uh, the amino acids and remove the nitrogenous part uh, from the amino acid and change it into the uh, urea and then send it to the liver and in the liver the urea changes into urine and they will be excreted out of your body. So that's the whole purpose is to get rid of urea. So urea will be definitely found in the urine and it will not be reabsorbed at all. If this, something like this happens, it means that there is a kidney failure, it doesn't work well. So this is wrong. Water, all will be reabsorbed at this part in the Leopold Henley, but some of some parts maybe never something will be found in the of course urea because it's still there is a water in it. So this D is not also answer, so the answer is A. 
Question number 14, which of the following can be an effector in a reflex arc? I told you what the effectors are. Effectors, it means that they show uh, based on the st uh, stimulus type of the stimulus and these messages that have been received by your receptor cells and sent to the brain. And now the brain has sent those uh, orders that what actually the effector should do through your mo motor neuron. So the, the motor ne neuron carries all those instructions and send it to the effector. The, what does the effector do? It depends. It can either contract or relax or release or secrete some kind of the hormones or uh, liquids or something like that. If it is a gland, it secretes some hormones or the, some secretion it will have. But if it is like a muscle so it shows some contraction or relaxation or some kind of movement so the effectors either can be muscles or can be glands so which one are showing a muscle or gland you have to look for it into these options a a gland yes so this is the answer the receptors are not reflect are not effectors they are receptor cells and see the brain is the control center full of the nerve cells this is not a factor actually is where the decision are being made and interpret the data the spinal cord also no nothing so the answer is a you have to look for something here which is a gland or is a muscle question number 15 is the diagram of the human eye again and also the question is that when focusing on a closed object at night so it is two dark two things it is closed and it is dark now how what is the state of the structures p and q q is the actually that uh, uh, suspensory ligaments and p is the uh, ciliated muscle these are antagonistic. I means that if one is relaxed, the other one should be contracted. They always the, the actual reaction is opposite, so they work in an in opposite actually reaction that we have. So once one of them gets is contracted, the other one should be relaxed. So if for the time being, when knowing this, I can easily omit those ones that are not the answer. Contract. Uh, relax and a slack are both the same thing. So I, D is not answered definitely. Um, contract and tight, both of them are the same thing. So I re remove A and D from the answer. Now between B and C, which one is the answer? Because now the C, there are opposite uh, words, contract and a slack. A slack means um, relax. Relax, tight. Okay. Uh, so between two, these two, I have to decide which one is the answer between B and C. So if looking at the closed object, I told you the closer the object, the rounder or thicker or more curved the lens should be. In order for the lens to become thicker and rounder, these actually suspensory ligaments should actually release or make the lens free. So once they leave it, they do not pull it. So this lens become round. So I know that Q, which is the suspensory ligament, they should be relaxed or a slack. So I know that uh, now, so which one is a relaxed or a slack? Suspensory ligament, Q, a slack, B is the answer. B is the answer. And you have to know that always this one is opposite, the, the action is opposite to the other one. Once this one is relaxed or a slack, the other one should be contracted. So P should be contracted. So the answer is B. Now we go to the next question, question number 15. Which feature of sexual reproduction helps a species to evolve? So um, let's uh, explain this phrase that actually how the evolution happens. Sexual reproduction allows an organism to combine half of its genes with the half of the other individual's genes, which means new combination of the genes are produced every, in every generation. So, the, so that sexual reproduction thus increases genetic variation, which increases the raw material of which natural selection operates. And in uh, contrary to this, in sexual reproduction, 
an exact genetic copy of the parent organism it produced. So unlike sexual reproductions, a sexual reproduction only introduces genetic variation due to mutation if it happens. So there is a mutation in the DNA, a change into the um, sequences of the amino, uh, amino acids into the DNA. At that time, we have a very quick mutation among the, uh, that generation or uh, in that population. But in the, in the sexual reproduction, every time in every uh, reproduction, we have a new combination of the genes. So that's why we have more variation. So I just one more time explain that which is statement about the Arabic and Arabic respiration is correct. In the Arabic and Arabic respiration use oxygen. The I mean cells use oxygen, and in the mitochondria happens uh, by using the oxygen and it break down the glucose molecules and release its en the energy or in form of the ATP uh, of its uh, which was hidden inside the bones of these. Uh, molecule. And in a, an aerobic respiration also is a breakdown of the glucose molecule, but it's in absence of the air or oxygen. And it produces a, it's a smaller amount of the uh, energy compared to the aerobic respiration and also it uh, produces lactic acid at the same in the uh, muscle cells. In the muscle cells it produces lactic acid. But in the Yeast, it produces alcohol and carbon dioxide in, in the anaerobic respiration. It happens. Um, they produce an, uh, so this is a breakdown of the distance. Yes, that's correct. So both of them they do. So A is correct, is the answer. They produce an oxygen death. No, actually, that's the oxygen death that causes anaerobic respiration to happen. I mean, lack of oxygen causes anaerobic respiration to happen when there is no, you know, not enough oxygen. And in the aerobic respiration, when there is too much oxygen available, a lot of oxygen, so it happens. So it doesn't happen in both of them. And they use carbon dioxide? No. Um, anaerobic respiration is just a breakdown of the molecules by enzyme without oxygen. There is no carbon dioxide. And here, aerobic respiration, it happens in the presence of the oxygen. And by using oxygen, it's not by uh, carbon dioxide actually produces carbon dioxide. And uh, D is that they, is they use oxygen, so not only in the aerobic respiration, uh, oxygen is being used by the anaerobic, is, and there is no oxygen, that's why we have anaerobic, or without the air, this process happens. So the answer is A. Question number 21, which is a statement about light receptors in the retina of a normal human eye is correct. You know that in the retina, we got a, a lot of a, a receptor cells for the light, which is light sensitive cells. Um, the cones, so I read the first one, the cones only work in dim light and the cones actually are responsible for the color. They get the colored light to see colors. And the rods are for just the light, uh, they get light in intensity and just for seeing light, the brightness. So it doesn't have anything to do with the color, but the cones, they have uh, three different types of the cones we have. Um, now I want to show this diagram of the ITU. And as you can see, this is a, it's like a cross section of the eye, human eye. This yellow color line here, this is retina. Uh, it is full of the light receptor cells or photoreceptor cell. And there are two types of the cell actually. One of them are cones and the other one are rods. And there, these rods, rod cells, are just one type themselves. And the other ones are three types we have. As you can see in the diagram, they are blue light, actually rod cells, red light and green light, rot, uh, con cells. So the con cells actually are for getting the light to see the light of the, the, mm, the color of the light. So they can be three types themselves, blue, red, and green color. 
So we have three types of the cone cells, one type of rod cells, and all of them are placed here in the back of the eye and on the retina. Only in the fovea, this part is a very actually the light will be focused. And this, this part is uh, this blind spot, as you can see here. The blind spot actually has, has nothing in it. it, as it comes from the uh, name is blind. It's, you do not receive any light here. There is no cells. And because that's the end of the neurons, it actually leaves the eye from this part and it goes to the brain. So there is no actually uh, photoreceptor cells here at this point on the blind spot. It's very important. You have to know this one too. So uh, fovea is full of the photoreceptor cells and it gives the sharpest image uh, and with the full details and because it, it can perceive colors directly and you have the, it gives you the highest acuity of the vision. And but the rod cells uh, also they let you to uh, is very sensitive to the light levels, different light levels or intensity. So it let, let you to see in a very low light too. Even uh, that are the the things that you should know about this part. So uh, which one is says that about the uh, eyes correct? The cones only work in dim light. No, this is wrong. The rods are found in the fovea. No, that are the cones that will mostly be found in the fovea. That's why you, in the fovea, that's where you get the, uh, because of you have high uh, concentration of the cones, you get the sharpest images here. It's a very good vision. If you, that's why the lights are focused here on the fovea. See, there are three types of the cones now. Um, yes, there are three types of the cones. Uh, with the different colors, that they receive different colors, like a blue, green, and red. Uh, so this is the answer, this is correct. Number D, there are three types of the rod, this is wrong. It's only one type of rod, so. So C is answer. Question number 22 is about the aerobic respiration and balance equation here. So you need to, to write the balance equation. I have to choose one of these options between these. So the formula of the glucose in the um, respiration uh, is the breakdown of the glucose molecule by using oxygen. Now that is the presence of the oxygen. So X should be glucose. So, uh, and the formula of the glucose is C6H2O6. So by knowing this, I know definitely C and D are wrong. So between A and B now I have to choose. Y is definitely water because the product of the uh, aerobic respiration is carbon dioxide and water. So the formula of the water is H2O. Now I have to know how many molecules of them of each is being produced. It's only one molecule of the uh, CH, C, uh, C6H2O6 is actually being used up to react with the six molecule of the oxygen. It produces six molecules of carbon dioxide plus six molecules of water. You can practice it yourself. You can balance out this equation and find out uh, that it is correct and surely it should be like that because these number of the atoms of each of these elements should be equal at the both sides. So the answer is B. Question number 23. The healthy pattern which substance is completely reabsorbed into the blood from the kidney tube. I told this many times to you. In a healthy person, no sugar, no glucose, no protein should be found in the urine which is going out of the body. If they test your urine and find out any, they track any uh, evidence of the presence of this glucose, protein, or the sugar in your blood, it means that if there is a sugar, you are diabetes or it is protein, perhaps you have kidney failure or illness problem. So all of them should actually stay in the blood or if this is absorb, you should re reabsorb into the bloodstream. So which of them in a healthy person is glucose A? Question number 25 is the again uh, synapse that you can see here between the two neurons. And you have to find the labels here, each one of each one. So 
the one this is the presynaptic uh, actually neuron and this is the postsynaptic neuron it means after synapse so, the, so it means that the signal actually is traveling into this direction from here into this one and is passed into the other neuron here and it travels from up to down now that signal of the impulse which is sending it triggers uh, and it stimulates this actually uh, part of the neuron and causes this part to um, these vesicles actually they move towards the uh, cell membrane at the end of the presynaptic neuron. So this is a vesicle and or a sac that inside is full of the neurotransmitters. You can see them, a the small dot there inside it. Then they move towards this and fuses itself with the membrane of this cell. So X are neurotransmitters that are being emptied between the synaptic gap or the synaptic cleft. And anyone that you write or you mention is correct. So why is synaptic cleft or synaptic gap? So I check again, W vesicle. So it should be between C and D. So A and B is totally wrong. I continue with the C and D. X should be neurotransmitters. So just now, without even checking the rest, I can know which one is the answer. C is correct. C is the answer. X is a neurotransmitter. It's not a receptor. Z or Z is the receptor. Y is synaptic cleft or synaptic gap. And Z is a receptor. So are protein receptors, receptor proteins that they receive the transmitter, the transmitter, they sit on them and they fuse them themselves with them and they trigger an, another action potential inside these uh, other neuron. So answer is C for this part. Question number 25, which row shows the action needed for the eye to focus on a distant object? I think we have told this one many times. I will, I will uh, again, explain this one to you. When you look at a very close object, the lens become rounded shape or more curved, the curvature increases. But if you look at the very far, so the lens should become actually thinner, less curved. So in order for that to happen, it should be actually pulled from both sides. By what? By suspensory ligaments. They pull them from the both side and, make, and cause the lens to become more actually thinner. So the lens should become thinner. I just continue with the C and D, so A and B is totally wrong. So suspensory ligament, in order to pull this uh, lens, it should actually become tightened, isn't it? So it means that, uh, they should be, that also they should be pulled by the ciliary muscles. To our muscles. But because I told you the action of the suspensory ligaments and ciliary muscle are like, um, they are not actually, it's like in opposite direction. So once the one is tightened, the other one should get uh, relaxed. So once you found that, so D should be answer. D is the answer because here the muscles are relaxed. That's why the suspensory ligament is being pulled and tightened so that the lens it become actually pulled and become thinner and less curved. So answer is D. Question number 26, I continue with it. The liver and the pancreas work together to control the concentration of glucose in the blood, which statement is correct. The liver converts the small molecule of glucose to large molecular, molecular glucagon. So, So um, the liver and pancreas, they work together to control the concentration of the glucose in the blood. Um, it means that the liver converts the small molecule of glucose to the large molecule of the glucagon. Glucagon is a hormone and it is actually made by the pancreas. Uh, it's not what actually liver makes. Uh, liver converts glucose uh, into large molecules of the glycogen, not glucagon. So you should not... Um, take these two uh, 
you will be confused by these two terminologies. Glucagon is a hormone and glycogen is a large molecule, a complex molecule, insoluble molecule or form of the glucose. The liver, so number B, so this is totally wrong. The liver releases the hormone insulin, you know, when blood glucose levels are too high, it's not the liver that actually secretes the insulin hormone. That's the pancreas that produces and uh, releases the insulin hormone. Then that's the insulin that triggers that chain of the reaction in the liver. So this is also wrong. The insulin is being produced and released by pancreas, not liver. And also the other one, glucagon, also the same, is being made and released by uh, pancreas, not liver. The pancreas does not respond to an increase in blood glucose level. This is wrong. It responds. When there is an increase, it produces insulin and in actually secretes it into the bloodstream. And the blood takes that insulin all the way to the liver and cause the liver to convert those extra glucose, which is inside the blood, into glycogen big molecule and store it in the, uh, into the cells. And when there is a low concentration of the glucose in the blood, so your blood needs more glucose to survive, actually, your cell to survive, to live. So they need more glucose to have energy to stay alive. So then your pancreas knows that. Your brain actually detects that changes in the blood glucose and send a message to the pancreas. Pancreas actually here reproduces and releases, this is the time, glucagon, which is another hormone. Then this one goes into the blood, goes to the liver, and there causes the liver to break those glycogens that it has already stored, break it into a small glucose molecules and send it, release the glucose into the bloodstream so it can be used by the cells. So, so this is the process. So the last one, the pancreas responds to a fall in the blood glucose by increasing the release of the hormone glucagon. This is correct. So D is the answer. Well, question number 27, the statements are about the use of antibiotics, which uh, part, uh, practices would increase the chance of development of antibiotic resistance in bacteria. I and mean, which one causes the bacteria become more um, strong uh, and they do not respond to any antibiotic anymore. It causes as antibiotic resistance in bacteria. So you have to come up with a solution, find a better, uh, a newer version of the antibiotics that the bacteria is, doesn't know it. So what, which co what actually the action causes? The bacteria become uh, stronger, to become resistant against the antibiotic. Using an antibiotic to prevent infection Yes, you just, without any pre prescription, without knowing what the cause of infection is, you just take antibiotic, which is very dangerous. Using an antibiotic now to kill the bacteria causing an infection. No, if you know actually what actually been the cause, what, what bacteria has caused that kind of the infection and you use the correct, for example, um, antibiotic, then it's no worries. It doesn't cause any antibiotic resistance. Uh, but the, so this is not the answer. Using an antibiotic only when essential, so whenever it is essential, so also doesn't cause any kind of bacterial actually resistance uh, because you have uh, used it in a right time and the right way. So it is correct. It's been prescribed when it is essential. Using an antibiotic to treat a viral infection, this is dangerous too because the viruses cannot be killed by uh, antibiotics. So uh, if you have a viral infection, like now these days, like a coronavirus, if you use antibiotic to make your condition worse and also causes the bacterial infection also to um, develop, to be developed because and become, bacteria also become more resistant because they get used to that antibiotic and make some kind of the defense mechanism against it. They improve themselves, they evolve, and the next generation become even stronger so that antibiotic won't work on them anymore. So the answer here is B, one and four only. Question number 28, which description of cross-pollination is correct? The transfer of pollen grains from the anther of one plant to the stigma of a different plant. Yes, this is the answer. 
because cross-pollination, it means that it happens between two different plants from the same species, <clears throat> but one of them is, uh, sorry, is the uh, female, or the, and the other one is using the, uh, the pollen comes from the other, one other plant from the same species, and it actually sits on the stigma of the, another plant that is from the same species, and the, then fertilizes it. Um, but it is not the same plant. If it is the same plant, it becomes self-pollination and should not be a different species. So this is also important. So that's why B is wrong because this is the transfer of the pollen grain from the anther of this, or the same plant. No, it's not the same plant. From one plant to itself, it's wrong. It's a self-pollination. Transfer of the pollen grains from the stigma of one plant to another of a different plant. It's not a different plant. It's not a different, different species. So, <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's not a transfer of the pollen grains. Uh, from the stigma, this is, the pollen grains are on the anth, not on the stigma. And uh, so these two are totally wrong because the pollen grains is not, doesn't come from the stigma. Pollen grains comes from the uh, male part of these uh, flower. So with male part, it means anth. So the answer is A. The next question, let me make it smaller so we can get the whole image again. Uh, a patient is injected with adrenaline, which graph shows the expected changes to pulse rate and the blood glucose concentration. Make it a little bit bigger so we can see the diagrams again. So I told you whenever there is an increase in adrenaline and or adrenaline actually is, is uh, in, uh, produced and secreted into your blood. So the pulse rate increases, and also blood glucose concentration should also uh, increase, be increased and level up. So, so which diagram shows this trend? Do you write the time, time after injection, blood glucose concentration, pulse rate, pulse rate, pulse rate after injection is coming down. This is wrong. Pulse rate down, wrong. Post laid down wrong. So which one are going is it uh, going uptrend? This one. So C is the answer, showing an increase by time. Both of them are showing an increase in the level of the uh, their intensities and concentration. Question number thirty. As a diagram, we present a synapse in the brain involved in the uh, perception of the pain, which labeled molecule represent the heroin. Actually, neuron or oh, that muscle, and this one is the presynaptic. Actually, this is where it, uh, the neurotransmitters are being made in the vesicles and being transferred there, then the port in the between the gap. And now the neurotransmitters should actually sit into this actually part there. Uh, there are receptor actually cells uh, that they receive the neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitter shape should be reciprocal, reciprocal to the shape of these uh, uh, re actual receptor proteins. If it is round like this, so it should be the other one should be uh, circular or round like this. So A is the answer. No, so A should be answer. The other ones are not. If they the shape of the neurotransmitter uh, the receptor was like this or like this as in the shop corner or the other one so it could this one could be fitted inside but this is smooth and round so this one should be this circular one now question number 31 Did the neurons at synapses contain vesicles which type of substance is found inside the vesicle we already talked about this. Thing. Inside the vesicles, we got neurotransmitters, always. The next one, again, the structure of the eye and the pupil here. How do the muscles make the pupil much smaller? Smaller, it means actually should these muscles, they move towards the center, so they make the whole smaller. In order for this to happen, the radial muscle they they should get relaxed so they let these 
uh, circular muscle to move. So the circular muscle, they pull themselves inside, so they become contracted. So they are antagonistic again. Circular muscle contract, the other one relaxes. Circular muscle contract, this one, radial muscle con should be relaxed. If the radial muscle contracts, this one should get relaxed. So they are opposite jobs they do. So here, because the circular muscle, they need to move in and close, make this one a bit closer and make the smaller the pupil, so they become contracted. But the radial muscle, it should be relaxed so that they let the circular muscle to move in. So which one is the answer? C is the answer because circular muscle relaxes and radial muscle um, is a contraction. Let me see. Sorry. <clears throat> the size of a pupil, how do the muscle make the pupil smaller? Smaller, yes. So smaller, so this should be contracted, and then this one should be relaxed. So the circular muscle contract, and radial muscle relax. So answer is B. Yes. Answer should be B. Now the next one. A patient has a dye injected into the blood supply, and then the dye ap uh, appears in the in his excretory system as shown. Okay, this is what we can see the dye. There is no dye here. If there is no dye here, which part of which part is blocked? Here is blocked. From here, the this actually renal system is blocked. So which part of it it is? This is kidney. This is bladder. This is urethra, which guides the urine outside of the body. And this is urethra. This is urethra. So which part is the blockage happened in the urethra? So answer is B. Question number 35, the urine exercise. Oh, I think I, I missed one question. So nonverolone is an anabolic steroid, and the reason is that the anabolic steroid usually, uh, like the uh, mimic, like a synthetic human-made variation of the male sex hormone testosterone, that they cause the uh, building of the muscles, and uh, they grow muscles and they make it. Uh, so this is that's why it's been frequent, not frequent, and usually very, very. Um, some of the acids are interesting to get this kind of the anabolic steroids like this chemical. So because it causes the muscle tissue to build up or to grow, so it's an anabolic steroid. It's not antibiotic, it's not a depressant because it slows down reaction. Why do we need to slow down our reaction? We need to be uh, stronger, we need to, uh, to be able to compete and become more aggressive. We cannot take antidepressants, we cannot take antibiotics, or not, we don't have any infection. They are not neurotransmitters, they are anabolic steroids, they are kind of hormones, but they are being synthesized by human beings. 35, so the answer is A. 35, during exercise, receptor detect a change in the blood and cause the breathing rate to increase. What change do the receptor detect and where are they found in the body? Change in the blood and site of the detection. The site of the detection is always brain. So between uh, brain, these two brains, which is A and C, I have to see which one is correct. Uh, B and D are totally wrong or rejected. So between A and C, I have to choose one. Is it oxygen decrease, decreases or carbon dioxide decreases? Carbon dioxide decreasing or, uh, sorry, is increasing. <clears throat> Which one? Is it the oxygen decreases or carbon dioxide increases? We, there is a carbon dioxide increases. So that's why the breathing rate increases to remove the excess carbon dioxide because CO2 is very toxic, is causes um, make the environment of the cells acidic and causes the uh, hormones to not work and it uh, changes the shape of the all the enzymes and the enzymes stop working become denatured. So in order for that, it needs to excrete the carbon dioxide. So that's why we breathe faster so that it is the brain detects the carbon dioxide changes which is increase in the co2 
So answer is A. Now the diagram is again the kidney, so you have to label what is X, what is Y, what is Z. Z is the ureter, so between, so between A and C, one of them should be an answer. So X is uh, the uh, cortex, so definitely A is the answer because Y is medulla and this pyramids of the medullary pyramids are here. So A is the answer. It's a very easy question. So the next one. Do our two types of the diabetes, one and two. The graph shows the number of the children with each type of the diabetes per 100,000 children in one country. Number of the children with diabetes are here. And the age per year is also written here in yes. So this one, the lighter gray is type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes is shown by this color. So which conclusion can be made from the graph? I move it up a bit. So you have to be able to interpret this and play with the data a little bit. So 1.5% of 9-year-old have diabetes. 9-year-old, this way. 150 is 150 uh, have diabetes it means overall they got diabetes in order to answer this question I construct a table for you so the number of overall for the children is 100,000 and out of these uh, the number of the children who are nine years old and they have diabetes if you look at the graph, the chart, you will find it is 150. Now, I want to get a percentage. It means that out of 100, if there were 100 tested, how many children of just nine year old they got diabetes? So, if you want to do the calculation, it becomes 150. 150 times uh, 100 divided by 100,000. Do the calculation and the result will be 0.15%. So this result uh, is different from uh, what actually is given in option A, which is 1.5%. So we know that the, the option A is wrong. So number B says that 31. 3% of 17 years old with diabetes have type 2 diabetes. If you do the cal same calculation and get the percentage, you'll find a different answer because the answer would be 31.25%, not 31.3%. So I will do the calculation because this part is the type 2 from the, this, this is a 17 years old, and this part of it, only this part, which is darker in color, is a type 2 diabetes children. So it means that although this is 320 overall children that are aged 17 years old. So out of 320, we have 100 children that got only type 2 diabetes. If they're out of 100, how much? So the, if you do the calculation, it becomes 31.25%. Percent. Okay, so as this also B is wrong also. So question number C, so uh, part C is the answer actually. There are 10 more 12 years old in the country with diabetes than 13 years old. So this is 13 and this is 12 years old. Each actually this box equals to 10 more. So each bought more. It means that this is 210, this is 220, 30, 40, and this is 50. So, yes, it is 10. Actually, they are having 10 more uh, children with this diabetes compared to uh, 13 years old, 12 years old. Sorry, 13 years old. Yeah, 12 years old is 10 actually more. So, C is the answer. D, type 2 diabetes will cause more health problems than type 1 is wrong because we do not understand these with, by looking at this uh, bar chart. 
So our answer for this one, the correct answer is C. The next question is structure of the wind pollinated plant. What feature it has been located from outside? What do you see? What, what's, what, how actually uh, the filaments and uh, stigma and the female and male pods and the petals are actually located in the plants. How do they look like? What is the color? How big they are? The size? Look at the size. Look at if they are hanging out or they are just, uh, if, which one is taller, which one is shorter? Are they inside of the plant or they are hanging out? Uh, are they feathery or not? Based on this, you make a conclusion that this plant or this flower, for example, is wind pollinated or iron insect pollinated so wind pollinated now in the for the wind pollinated these what actually should happen is that the uh, the petals need to are not needed because the petals are for to attract insects they are usually colorful they are scented so they don't have nectar uh, that more nectar or they are not scented and they they don't have that much uh, attractive petals uh, because it carried the pollen is carried by wind, not by insects. So between C and D, one of them should be answers. So let's continue and see which one are the answer. So I'll ignore A and B; they are wrong. So the, uh, C says they have large anthers. Yes, they should have large anthers, usually larger than the uh, filaments, and they are actually hanging out of the flower, so they are exposed to the wind, so the wind can carry, they can lift the pollens, pollens away and put them on the stigma of the plants. So, and a feathery stigma, of course, they feathery because they can catch the pollens when they're passing by. Uh, but D says the small petals, okay, produces nectar. I said they have no nectar because uh, that juicy uh, or honey-like uh, juices, so because they are not to attract the insects. And have a strong scent? No, no scent. So between C and D, C is correct. Question number 39 is your skin again, and you have to label different structures. What is uh, why? Why is a muscle? So the only, if you do not know, like you're not sure about all of them. Well, so it's one of the ways to guess. I know, for example, this should be a muscle. Okay, so is why the muscle? So A and D are actually wrong. So I omit these two from my possible choices, and only I have B and C, and I have to choose between B and C. We see which one is correct. Yes, this is hair erector muscle. It pulls the hair, so it causes it to erect, to stay upright, or to lie down. So Z now, and X. You are not sure which one is which one. This is a this is a nerve actually goes here, and the end of it is attached to this foot. So this actually receive the any kind of the stimulus from your skin you, is the touch is a pressure is a it or whatever so it's received it and send it to the other neurons so this is one nerve so but this is actually called as a sensory neuron so because it senses it feels the things because it receives the sickness from the um, your skin it can be any stimulus, heat, changes in the temperature, change, changes in the pressure, pain. So this is a receptor or sensory neuron, sensory neuron. And what is X? It's pointing to this part, this part only. This is a gland that produces sweat. Sweat is a, that liquid that goes out of this pore. This is a pore on the skin. So it goes out through here. So which one is the answer? answer? Is C. Option C is the answer. And finally, the last question, hopefully, and is about, again, the uh, fertilization of this flower or pollination and fertilization. So the diagram shows the ovary. And you should, uh, so which process is shown in the diagram? So the pollen grain is already on the schema, the stigma of the plant. So it means that the pollination is done. It's not pollination, okay? It has nothing to do with the pollination. So e, A and D are 
totally rejected. Between B and C, and meiosis, meiosis is happens in the cell. We cannot see anything here happening. So that's the fertilization. When the pollen grain sits on the stigma and sends it produces a long tube and send it down into the into the ovary and then into the uh, cell, into the egg cell, and fuses, injects its own you know, genetic material into the cell and fuses with it and causes fertilization. So this is called, this is uh, B is the answer, which is fertilization. Thank you for watching this video and being having patience enough to follow me all, all the way uh, up to the end of this session. Thank you very much and see you again with another discussion.